Sound check, sound check. Andrea, are you all set? We're all set. All right. Good evening. I'll bring the meeting of the April 19th, 2021 San Carlos Planning Commission to order. We begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance pledge to the flag of the United States of America, the Republic, to the Republic. Andrea, a roll call, please. Commissioner Iacoponi? Present. Uh, Commissioner Clements is excused. Commissioner Bradley? Present. Vice Chair Roof? Present. And Chair Garvey. Present. The next item on the agenda is public comment. I want to take a brief moment now to describe the public comment item. Public comment is limited to items not on the agenda. The commission may briefly respond to statements made or questions posed as allowed by the Brown Act. However, the commission's general policy is to refer items to staff for attention or have a matter placed on a future agenda future commission agenda for a more comprehensive action or report. Is there anyone in the waiting room who wishes to speak on an item this evening that is not on the agenda? I don't see anyone, Sarah, do you see anyone? Not at this time. All right, thank you. The next item on the agenda is the minutes from the March 15th, 2021 meeting. Does anyone have any changes to the minutes? No. No. Hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to approve the minutes. I'll, I'll move to a motion. Go ahead. I'll move to approve the meeting, uh, the minutes of the meeting of March 15, 2021. And I'll second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Andrea, roll call, please. Commissioner Iacoponi? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Roof? Yes. Chair Garvey? Yes. And Commissioner right. Clemson? The next item on the agenda is a public hearing. I'm going to read the procedure now for a public hearing. Staff will present a report on the history, physical features, et cetera, on the application followed with the staff's recommendations. The applicant will make a presentation. Thereafter, interested members of the community may speak on the proposal. When all interested parties have had an opportunity to be heard, the hearing will be closed and no further discussion from the floor can be held. The commission will then consider the evidence and make its recommendation. If you challenge a public hearing item in court, you may be limited to raising only those issues you or someone else raised at the public hearing described in the notice, the public notice, or in written correspondence delivered to the city at or prior to the public hearing. Speakers will be called upon by the last three digits of their phone number and should state their names prior to addressing the commission. 
the staff will, this will assist staff in the preparation of the minutes. Our first item today is, our only, our only public hearing item today is 521 Winding Way, APN 049-020-010, PLN 2019-00209. The proposed project includes design review for a new residence, a variance, a waiver, and a stream setback determination, a master development plan and lot line adjustments for five single family residential lots were previously approved for this site. Does staff have a presentation? Yes, thank you. Welcome Jacob. Good evening commissioners. Uh, my name is Jacob Garcia. I'm a contract associate planner in the planning division. The item before you this evening is a request for design review approval for a new residence at 521 Winding Way. In addition to the design review, the project also requests a waiver for overall height, a variance from the natural state, and stream setback determination. <clears throat> the project is located in a canyon at the existing end of Winding Way on one side and near Chesham Avenue on the other side. The parcel, highlighted in blue and yellow, is a part of a larger 3.41 acre site. The site is bordered by open space and unincorporated San Mateo County. There are several houses located uphill from the site and in this portion of the road, Winding Way is currently under construction. The site was annexed into the city in 2009 and one of the conditions of approval tied to the annexation was to prepare and adopt a master development plan for the entire 3.41 acre site. This master plan was adopted by the city council in September of 2018 and the adopted master development plan presents four of the five parcels designed as downhill style residences with the garage constructed at street level in the living areas of the houses located below the garage. As there is a creek at the rear of the properties, this, is a, this would result in new houses being located above and away from the creek, taking access from the eastern portion of the winding way. This remaining fifth house would be constructed as an uphill style unit also away from the creek. Uh, the master development plan has several requirements, uh, some of which are listed here, including a minimum lot size of 20,000 square feet, two paved off-site guest parking spaces. The houses are to be built in the general location as shown on the map of the master development plan. Um, there are designated no development areas, primarily for biological um, uh, spe and sensitive species and habitats. Um, there are mitigation measures for those same uh, species and, and habitats, and there's also a 25 foot creek setback located on each of the properties. Uh, the project site at 521 Winding Way, it's an uh, undeveloped uphill lot. The zoning is RS3 zoning. It's located in the Hillside Overlay District, also located in the Stream Development and Maintenance Overlay District and the general plan uh, is further zoned single family low density. Uh, this is a summary of the required and proposed development standards for 521 Winding Way. As you can see, the proposed site complies with the development standards set forth with the exception of the overall height, natural state requirement, and stream development setback. These are the basis for the requested waiver, variance, and stream setback determinations to be discussed in the upcoming slides. Starting off first with the design review for 521 Winding Way, the applicant is requesting design review approval for a 4,453 square foot multi-level single family residence. No protected trees are requested for removal. Um, and what you're seeing on the screen here is a street view rendering of 521 Winding Way. Uh, this rendering also um, is slightly different than what you'll see on the plans. Uh, the plans propose in the guest parking to have a two foot separation between the required driveway for the main residence and the uh, landscaping strip in between the guest parking and the public right-of-way uh, is no longer being proposed as um, you will see on the upcoming slides. Uh, this here is the partial uh, site plan uh, focused on the location of the proposed residence and the guest parking and here is where you'll see that gap between the two driveways of the guest parking and the um, main residence parking. And uh, this here is the floor plan for the garage level. The applicant is proposing a new multi-level residence. The house will step up the hillside and the garage will be orient oriented to the front of the lot. 
at, and at the street level, there's access to the garage and guest parking. The entrance to the front of the residence is accessible by exterior staircase uh, from the street level and an interior staircase from the garage. The lower level consists of kitchen, a kitchen, family room, a dining room, one bedroom, two bathrooms, and two exterior terraces at the front and side of the residence. At the upper level, um, there is a bonus area, three bedrooms, including a master suite, as well as three bathrooms, a laundry room and three exterior ter terrace and patio areas at the front and rear of the residence. This here is the front elevation uh, for the new residence. Again, here is the front rendering. Uh, the main body of the new residence is proposed to be in stucco tan color um, called doe skin. And the fascia windows and metal guardrails will be a dark brown color called brown bear. The garage and lower exterior stair retaining walls will consist of a stone veneer, um, which is uh, labeled as cultured stone Southwest blend pro fit uh, to complement the color and materials of the stucco and the fascia. Uh, the proposed roofing will be a GAF Everguard dark bronze color with a decorative gravel topping. This is uh, the elevation from the rear side of the residence. As you can see, it's built into the hillside. Here is the south, uh, I'm sorry, here is the left side elevation for the residence. Here is the right side elevation for the main residence. Um, I will now detail the request for the overall height waiver, the natural state variance, and the stream setback determination for the guest parking. The applicant is proposing a height waiver to allow deviation from the overall height of 35 feet. The municipal code allows this deviation for up to 10% of the requirement, and the applicant is requesting an overall height of 36 feet 5 inches. And um, as you can see here on this slide, the the allowable height of 35 feet is labeled there at, with the red orange line and the proposed uh, height with the request for the waiver is at 36 feet 5 inches indicated by the blue line. The slope of the property has a direct impact of the height of residence per the municipal code and maximum natural state variance of 85% is required. The area that counts against natural state includes not only the footprint of the residence, but also the driveway, retaining walls, paving, light wells, et cetera. And the greater the requirement for natural state, the less allowable area for the footprint of the residence, and the more likely the height and number of stories would have to increase. Further, staff requested that the roof have attractive gravel or similar as it is visible from above, and this requires a minor increase in height to create a parapet to contain the material. For the variance request, uh, the applicant is requesting a variance from the natural state requirement found in the, hill the hillside overlay district. Based on that requirement, 84.4% of the lot would be required to be in natural state. This would mean that no structures, paving, or any disturbance of the land could occur within the area, and that the maximum allowed disturbed area is 15.6% or 5,566 square feet. However, as the first diagram shows, just the parking and stormwater measures alone make up a majority of the maximum allowed disturbed area. Therefore, a variance is needed to build a residence beyond the garage, guest parking, and stormwater requirements. And on this slide, if the variance is approved, the applicant will be able to maintain a 77.7% .7 of the lot in natural state as shown. The stream setback determination, uh, the applicant is requesting a stream setback determination for the two guest parking spaces located within the required 25 foot stream setback. The master development re plan requires that there be two off, off street parking spaces for a 521 winding way and uh, it further, or the master development plan approved plans demonstrate that the off street guest parking would be located, excuse me, at the front right side of the residence. The applicant is requesting to instead locate the guest parking within the 25 foot stream setback to the left of the residence above a culvert provided for the drainage below the street. This new location is also within the extents of a tributary that runs into the Pulgas Creek, which is just downstream of the culvert. The final focused environmental impact report for the master development plan refers to this portion of the Pulgas Creek watershed as an unnamed tributary 
and staff finds that the unnamed tributary, which is adjacent to the new resident and overlaps with the proposed guest parking area to be ancillary to the Polgus Creek and may be considered critical to the hydrologic system and the ecologic function of the Polgus Creek waterway, which is one of the three primary purposes of the stream development and maintenance overlay district for San Carlos Municipal Code. Therefore, staff has determined that the regulations of the stream development maintenance overlay district apply. The applicant has consulted with their project biologist, indicating that the newly proposed parking, who have indicated that the newly proposed parking would not result in any adverse impacts to the stream or riparian habitat. They further opine that the new location is preferred to the old as it requires less vegetation and site development uh, to be removed as the uh, yes parking location has already been cleared of vegetation when the installation of the road and culvert occurred. The uh, newly proposed location of the guest parking and the stream setback is also located where previous development for the winding way road improvements occurred and there would be no additional excavation in this uh, location. Additional conditions of approval have been included from the project biologist and the city engineer within the waiver variance stream setback determination and code compliance certificate included within the staff report. Uh, community outreach conducted by the developer and by the city. The applicant held a meeting on uh, January 2nd, 2020 and mailed plans and information to neighbors within a 300 foot radius of the project site on December 20th, 2019. No neighbors attended the meeting and no concerns were raised regarding the new residents. The city mailed out a notice to all property owners and occupants within 300 feet of the site on April 6th, 2021 to notify them of the public hearing and published a, public, uh, a notice in the newspaper on April 8th, 2021. No comments have been received to date. And if there are any questions for the staff or the applicant who's present, um, the Planning Commission may do so. Oh, I think you may be on mute. I didn't catch it. Was the applicant going to give a presentation or is this it? Sorry, Jacob, I was on mute. Th thank you for that presentation. Um, do any of my colleagues have any questions of Jacob before we hear from the applicant? Okay. <laughs> no. Jacob, I, I have a question. The culvert that you referred to, was that the blue line on the figure that was sort of perpendicular to the uh, road in the parking spots? Uh, the blue line does run underneath the road, which it enters at the culvert. Um, just if you follow the blue line up from where the uh, proposed guest parking yellow lines are, you'll see the head wall. Oh, yes. Located there. Um, maybe a follow on and if we could s stick with that picture for just uh, that image for just one minute, please. Can we go back? Yep. Great. The, the proposed guest parking. Um, so what is call it downstream of the head wall is uh, already disturbed area then flowing into the street, correct? In other words, that blue line goes underneath the street. Yes, that is correct. Okay. Um, and maybe just a question, the parking material, is it uh, uh, porous or solid or what's planned? Uh, the, the city engineer has required that it's a pervious paver. Um, and the applicant may be able to specify more clearly what they are proposing there. And pervious uh, answers the question. Thank you. Nothing else for me. Another question on this figure. Where where was the original um, guest parking? It was at the front um, of the front right of the residence where the mouse is circling now. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I see the contour lines, and then there's these sort of square boxes above where you were just circling. What do those represent? Are those contour lines, or is that something else? 
Like, yeah, up above there. Those are contour lines um, running up the right side of the canyon. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, Jacob, this is Ellen. Going over to where the guest parking is, you mentioned that there was originally continuous pavers from the regular driveway over to guest parking, and that instead there had there's now a separation. Did I understand that right? Yeah, that's correct. There was a iteration before the final iteration that um, represents this rendering here, um, but. Per the municipal code, there's a two foot landscaping strip that needs to be maintained on both sides of the driveway, uh, the required driveway for the main residence. And so the final rendition of these plans um, implemented that and complied with the municipal code by separating the guest parking spaces from the uh, driveway of the main residence. Okay, Th that's very helpful to know that this is done for aesthetic reasons as opposed to an issue with drainage that came up at the last minute. That's very helpful. Thank you. Any other questions before we hear from the applicant? All right. Does the applicant uh, have a presentation? If so, you may begin. Hello. My name is can, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Hello, I, I wanted to say Jacob pretty much uh, covered everything um, in his presentation and it was very good. I wanna point out that the original parking area was on the right side of the house and would require uh, removing another 267 yards of dirt. And it would be uh, six to nine foot retaining walls for that parking space. After meeting with a biologist, um, we determined that the area we chose over to the left above or below the culvert was the best place to put it because we've already done all the grading there for the master plan for the road, as Jacob pointed out, and it wouldn't require any grading. Um, so that's kind of why we came up with the uh, the parking over to the left there. So it'd, it'd be a lot less disturbance and it'd be aesthetically a lot more pleasing. And everything else is, is pretty much, uh, I agree with uh, Jacob, good presentation. All right, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Grove. Um, any colleague uh, questions of Mr. Grove before we see if there's anyone from the public who would like to speak? Yes, uh, I'd like to ask if uh, it was considered to put the guest parking on the opposite side of the street toward the other resident, I believe to the south, since this is a planned unit development with a master plan, not have it so close to the proposed residence, but it would also serve the other, uh, I don't know the address, the, the house on the large lot across the street. Or is it topography? I, I, I'm looking at a little map. I can't see the uh, contours. Uh, through the chair, uh, each house is is required to provide two guest parking spaces. So uh, all five houses have two guest parking spaces for their specific house, um, in addition to the required parking. So there's a total, right. yeah, of 10, 10 guest parking spaces for the entire site. Thank you for that clarification, Andrea. Uh, Mr. Grove, this is Ellen. I had two questions, both relating to drainage. The first one is on drawing, uh, I think it's C5 in the packet. Can you tell me what is a bio treatment area? Does that filter water before it goes down to the creek? Does it modulate the flow of water before it goes down to the creek? I wasn't familiar with that term. Yeah, yes, the bio treatment is um, a treatment center. It's all the way, we have them on all, all five lots. And uh, in addition to that, it's on the side of the road all the way down the, from the bottom of Chasm all the way to the top of Winding Way. So yes, the bio treatment is designed to clean the water before it is metered out it's not it doesn't run freely into the creek it goes through like a metered and what i mean by metered is it's a big tank or a big uh, concrete box 
And at the end of that, at that end of that box, it has a, like a two inch pipe that comes out of the end of it. So it stores all this water after it's clean and then it meters it out slowly into the, into the creek or not the creek, but the, the drainage portion of the, of the building. Thank you. That, that's very helpful. And then the next page, uh, I think it's plan number C6. It also had a term I wasn't familiar with, a valley gutter. Is this like a French drain? Is this keeping water from running down the hill into the house? Can you help me understand what is a valley gutter and where does that drain? The, the valley gutter, I don't have that in front of me, but a valley gutter is exactly that. It collects water and then that would have to go to a drain and dissipate through the bio treatment center and then, and then on its way out again. Nothing on this property is allowed to, to just dissipate without going through the bio treatment center. If we're gathering it, it has to go through the, the bio treatment. Thank you. Very helpful. Any other questions of staff or the applicant before we hear from the public? All right. Um, now's an opportunity if you're uh, if you would like to call in and make a comment on this item. Uh, this is a good time to do that. Uh, Sarah, is there anyone in the waiting room? Yes. Greg Garcia. Good evening, Greg. Uh, please give us your full name and uh, you'll have three minutes to address the commission. Yeah, my name is uh, Greg Garcia and uh, I've been following this project uh, since it started. And I mean, it's an amazing project. And I believe, I mean, we definitely need housing and this is, you know, definitely filling, filling that void that we need. And I think it should be approved the way, uh, the way it's uh, proposed. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Anyone else, Sarah, in the waiting room? Yes, Greg Kawahara. Hello. Mr. Go ahead. Thank you. Um, first of all, I want to say um, <clears throat> thanks to Jacob for the excellent presentation of the project and the staff report. And really, I just had um, something I wanted to uh, point out. Mr. Carajo, did you go on mute? We heard you and then you cut off. I'm sorry. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Better? Yeah, much better, thanks. Um, what I was um, I'd like to point out is uh, uh, item on packet page 23 of the conditions of approval. Number one, number items number 21 and 22. I think those numbers for the overall height and natural state should match those of uh, packet page 21, items 2A and 2B. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kawahara. And um, Andrea, I'll defer to staff and or the applicant to, to locate this discrepancy. So, yeah. uh, oh, go ahead. Oh, uh, through the chair. Uh, yes, I, I identified um, that these are inconsistent um, and can be updated to match uh, the proposed um, height. Uh, waiver as well as the variance to the natural state. Thank you for pointing that out. Yes, and thank you. Through, through the chair, if uh, the commission does decide to approve this item, um, if you could just add that into the motion as well, with just updating um, the conditions of approval to match the plan for those two items. Thank okay. you. Sarah, is there anyone else in the waiting room? Chair Garvey, Ron Grove would like to speak. Yes, Mr. Grove. We can't hear you, Mr. Grove. Maybe you're on mute. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, 
I think I think the discrepancy was the height was one of those and and it dropped the height down to 36 foot five inches versus 37 something which was in the packet so it actually reduced the height and it made a little change to the I believe to the uh natural state if anybody's wondering what that was thank you for that clarification Sarah, are there any other callers in the waiting room who'd like an opportunity to be heard? Not at this time. If not, um, in hearing none, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll move we close the public hearing. I'll second that. All right, we have a motion and a second. Andrea, uh, can I have a roll call? Commissioner Iacopone? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Roof? Yes. And Chair Garvey? Yes. All right, we've heard from staff, uh, the applicant and the public. I, I'll now open up the meeting for discussion amongst uh, commissioners. Uh, who would like to start? Well, Maybe I can start by suggesting that maybe we discuss the three um, three key elements um, in sequence, the variance uh, for the natural state, number one, the waiver for the height, and number two, and then the, the creek setback, number three. So we can just kind of knock them off one at a time. But the, um, the variance for the natural state um, it's um, we've been, we've seen this before on on this sort of um, the topography of the of the property where um, where the rule um, is sort of un, unreasonable in the uh, in the in the restrictiveness that it would force the building height to be uh, to make a small footprint and to compensate for that small footprint to have a, a, a high height um, which would definitely be uh, less um less advantageous so the um and the uh, and some of that um encroachment on the on the natural state uh is due to the uh, the water drainage requirements which are pretty um uh, substantial given the um given the slope and the fact that there's water coming down that hill so the um so my perspective on the um uh, the natural state is is that it's a a fairly modest um, uh, variance that's required, and uh, it seems reasonable for the reasons I just said. Is my thinking. I would agree with that. I, I do recall this a, a very similar request being made for the previous four properties. It's a very steep area. I did go see the area. Oh, it's been maybe ten months now, and it is extremely steep. So I understand the request and agree that it seems uh, modest and it seems reasonable. All right, do we want, are there any comments on the waiver request? This has to do with the height. No. No. I guess I would, comment that the um we've also had also had uh, similar requests for these in the past uh, and that the specifics of this site um, do seem to um, be compatible with um, asking for that uh, one and a half foot uh, waiver um, part of that's due to the gravel roof that uh, that i agree is a pretty nice um, a pretty nice uh, feature of these houses of this house and, and um, um and the um, steepness of the lot, so that the um, the garage is necessarily a little bit is lower than the house, and that counts. So, um, to me, it uh, the specifics of this particular um, site and plan um, makes sense. So, I would support a waiver. I would agree with that. I, I seem to remember from the previous properties, part of this additional height is. There was a parapet or a, a little bit of a of a of a boundary around this attractive gravel um, 
And I, I'm, I'm guessing that that is similar for, um, for this design. Now the, the stream setback determination there, um, I think we should consider it pretty carefully because I like, I think the stream setbacks are in, in general, they're important to, uh, to respect and that we would, shouldn't um, allow the, allow those to be encroached on unless there's um unless there's a really good reason that's specific to the, to the uh, instance. And so, and, and this might require clarification from the staff. Are we asking for, from reading the material, an argument was made that it's not really a stream. This is my own phrasing, <laughs> but it's not, it's not really a stream. It does not flow. It's ephemeral, as I recall the word was. It doesn't flow uh, very often, and the vegetation along there is indicative of, of that dry condition. So it's not in, in most of the time, it's not a stream. Um, and that therefore, the setback rules shouldn't apply. So that would be one, if, if we're saying, okay, okay, we agree it's not a stream, then you know, then there's not an issue with the setback. That would be potentially one basis for the approval, if I understand things right. Or alternatively, we can, and correct me if I don't have this right, alternatively, we can say, well, that is a stream, but um, we're willing to give way on it because of the arguments that, that were just raised in the presentation today about, about uh, that it's the lesser impact to, to put it there than the alternative site. Um, so I wonder which basis would we be approving if we were to approve it? Um, are we saying it's not a stream or are we saying it, that it's better to, that it's okay to put it there? It is a stream and it's okay to encroach. Through the chair, I can go ahead and answer that and provide a bit of background as well, if that's okay with you. Yes. Um, so yes, uh, Commissioner Roof here. You're exactly right. This is, is very different than any of the other stream setback determinations you've seen. Um, this project in particular, um, as Jacob mentioned, has a has a very long history, um, as well as you know a final environmental impact report and, and a lot of analysis that's been done on it. Um, before determ before talking about the stream setback, um, the applicants did speak with staff. Uh, and everyone agreed that the proposed location now of the guest parking um, made more sense in terms of disturbing less area um, as the proposed areas where, where they're proposing the spot is already graded. Um, so once we, once we thought that yes, staff can you know, support that, we looked at the stream or the, the culvert there um, and the fact that there were these tributaries going in. Um, now, in the past, we have not um, had an issue where there's been a tributary. It's been the actual creek or stream. Um, however, with the fact that there's already been an environmental analysis done, and we wanted to make sure, well, sorry, and stepping back, and that the creek ordinance specifically talks about tributaries and the purpose behind them, um, we wanted to apply it in this case uh, for two reasons. One was we wanted to make sure that we had the biologist uh, report and, and make sure that it's not causing any additional impacts, which was provided. Um, the second thing is, is by doing the setback, it limits the location of the parking to what's shown on the plan. Um, so if it's, if this is approved and the applicant builds this, if they were to make any changes to that guest parking, um, it would need to come back to the commission for review and trigger another biologist review. Um, and so we wanted to, to make sure that we are considering that in relation to um, the stream itself and, and being really conservative about where that parking will be located. Um, if we went through the process of determining it's not, it shouldn't apply, um, which we did discuss, um, you know, at staff level and, and with all of the relevant departments, um, there was concern about, about that because it would take we would basically, you know, need to do a lot more research, go through the general plan a lot more than we did to say, is this or isn't this um, a creek, probably get an interpretation on it. 
and it seemed that determining the setback would make it process wise give the commission a way to look at any changes as well as impacts to the creek and that's a bit long-winded i don't know if i answered your question um enough or not so we agree it's a creek staff, a believe, staff believes the stream okay. setback applies yeah. okay. and also supports the proposal of where it's located okay, the sure. parking yes okay uh, maybe, uh, Angie, if I could uh, then follow up, please. Um, so the, there is a natural tributary, which is, we'll call it uphill from that um, headwall, that concrete uh, U or funny shaped V, right? That up, uphill from there, kind of the upper to the left, that's natural and that's not being disturbed. Is that correct? Correct. And this this um, line is actually, you know, as it gets to the road, it's it's under the road. So it's it's interesting because it's it's in a different, the proposed parking's in a different plane than, than the tributary itself and the culvert. Right. Uh, yeah, and so this, sorry, so just to, to clarify that, to make sure I understand. When that blue line passes through that shape, whatever whatever we call that shape, that head wall, it goes from above ground to underground. Is that right? That is correct. So there's a really a pipe. So those that yellow box is sitting, those two cars are sitting over a pipe that's underground. Yes, exactly. And how deep is that? Would you say? I mean, do we roughly? Is it five feet, eight feet, two feet? Just any idea? Um, I'd like to. I'd like to ask the applicant to respond. I'm not too sure yeah. off the top of my head. Uh, I think you are good, Ron. Yes, that pipe below the road at that section there is probably about thirteen to fifteen feet deep. Right. So thank you. So the stream is natural, kind of uphill, and then it disappears under the road 13 feet deep. Yeah, and at, at the end where that arrow is now is more like 20 feet. Okay. So therefore, the cars are sitting on soil that's already been disturbed. Yes, we graded that whole thing per the master development plan and put in that head wall that's there. So everything that you see there, that, that off street parking is adjacent to the road. That was all graded and and that pipe was put in. That used to be about a 20 foot deep ditch of erosion from when the old pipe eroded over the years. Yeah. And we had to backfill that whole section there and build that head wall and stick the pipe in below to to build that to build that road. So everything that, that you're seeing there as far as parking's going, we've already graded and done. It's it's complete. All we're doing is putting the pervious pavers on top and parking on it. Great, thank you. That's That, that gives me, uh, I can picture that. So thank you, uh, thanks for that clarification. So I, I think then maybe, you know, from my, uh, I like the idea that we've already got a piece of land which has been disturbed. We're not disturbing another piece of land. We're not contributing to a further reduction in natural state, one and two. While I see that the, the side of the cars may be you know, near this stream, they're actually closer to the street and you know, I guess anything washing off the cars would be out in the street anyway. So I'm less concerned about it going into, like it's not like it's flowing downhill into the culvert. So it, it seems it seems like a, a reasonable conclusion to, to not disturb over on the right side and to take advantage of what sounds like it's a dirt parking lot already on the left side. I'd like to clarify what Commissioner 
uh, Capone was just referring to about that culvert and the cars parked above it. Is it possible for water to flow off of the cars and the area surrounding it, sort of the darker gray area on the figure down the hill up, which would be sort of up on this figure and into that culvert, so not go through any biocontainment or uh, not go on the street, but go directly into the stream? Or is that a, um, is there a curb or a slope that would prevent water from flowing? Where does the water that comes down on the cars go? I can answer that. Okay. Would you like me to answer it? Yes, please. Yeah, along the road, uh, uh, that whole road is designed with a, a biosoil treatment. So from, if you're looking at the road side of the, of the project, that whole road slopes back towards those cars. And there's a bio treatment center that runs the whole length of that road, which is about 2,400 feet long. And so that the cars, the road is pitched back towards the street. So everything is going to that bio treatment center. I, I, the water can't go back uphill to get into that, the, the, I guess the stream you guys are, the culvert or whatever the description of that is. And it can't jump the head wall because um, the grade is higher on that side than the roads, the road side. Okay, thank you for clarifying that. That's, that's reassuring that we're not um, increasing the potential for um, pollutants to enter the stream, which is sort of the whole part of the um, the concern here, and so um, so I would tend I I am trending to thinking that as, as Commissioner Ina Capone just said that weighing the impact of the um, of the proposed location versus the impact of the alternate location in terms of um, all that grading that would be required, uh, building a retaining wall, uh, and um, and it wouldn't look as nice. Um, all those reasons add up pretty well for me to, I, I'm inclined to um, think this makes the most sense in providing a, um, a determination that it's okay to have the parking there. I'm in favor of that. I really like that there's no reduction in, in natural state. It's a beautiful area and keeping as much of that beautiful natural state as possible um, is a good idea and and this parking arrangement does that I like that I also like that the culvert has been uh, I think the word rehabilitated was used and and it's underground um, so I don't see a real problem uh, agreeing with uh, vice chair roof and commissioner Jacoponi that um, now that this now that we know that this is buried um, it doesn't seem to present the challenge that I thought it might. And I hadn't thought about the slope of the road. And if the slope of the road goes this way and the slope of the parking goes, you know, everything's going to flow um, into, into this holding area for water. So uh, that too um, is reassuring. Just some basic questions. Uh... For clarification, can you tell me when when the road is going to be paved and how wide is the right of way and how wide is the pavement? Are you asking me, Ron? Yes, Ron, yeah, can yeah, you answer that? Yeah, the first one third of the road we paved uh, last Thursday. So it's oh. paved all the way up to Kings and Queens Court, the little bypass road that, that has been done. Um, we don't want to pave the rest of the road until, of course, we get permits and we get the grading done or we'll destroy the road. The road is 22 feet wide, including the, the walkway, which is um, strong enough to hold a fire truck. So hopefully that answered your questions. Yes, thank you very much. Any other comments or questions on the creek setback? determination before we move on to any general comments or questions. I had a general comment or a question. I really, I thought it was an, a very attractive 
home, uh, a beautiful design. I really liked the natural colors. I liked the natural materials. I thought the colors and materials were chosen to either blend in or enhance the beautiful natural environment that this home sits in. And I appreciated the uh, thought that went into uh, choosing that. I also liked that the home uh, was gonna be all electric and that the utilities were going to be undergrounded. I, 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 uh, so visually and um, functionally, it's gonna work quite well. I had one, sorry, Don, one, you go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, please. Go ahead. All right. Um, Andrea, I had one follow-up. Um, the list of conditions um, in this approval, are they, are, are there any that are different? I mean, uh, leaving these three requests aside, are there any that are materially different from any of the other four properties? They seem the same, but is there anything you would point out to us that's different as a condition? As a condition? I'm actually gonna ask Jacob to answer that. I think that as far as, as far as I know, the only sort of different conditions have to do with the um, two parking spaces that engineering um, required such as the pervious pavers, but I'll, I'll let Jacob add anything else. Yeah, that's correct. The only differences between the conditions of approval for this project and uh, in the previous project uh, is related to the stream setback determination and for the specific numbers specified within the uh, the height waiver and the natural state uh, variance. Um, the last project also had conditions related to removal for trees. Um, so they generally all have the same set of conditions outside of their specific request as they all are um, citing the same master development plan and uh, zoning requirements. Great, thank you very much. And, and I would just then um, uh, echo Chair Garvey's comments. I thought it was a, it's, a, it's an attractive home and an attractive floor plan. Looks like it'll be a, a nice place uh, for a family to live. So uh, uh, well done to the design team and um, it'll be a nice addition to San Carlos. Yeah, it wasn't, an, it wasn't an easy design. I liked how you took advantage of the fact that you were building up a hill and layered the house such that you didn't have to build, dig out a whole bunch of the hill. You nestled it into the side of the hill. I thought that was nicely done. Yeah, I agree. It fits very nicely in, in with the landscape there. So it's a, very compatible with the, with the neighborhood and the, the environment there. I would like to uh, applaud the owners and the designers, architect, engineers, uh, for, as, as my fellow commissioner said, um, the site planning and uh, having gone to architecture school in the 50s myself, I, I love modern design and I uh, appreciate the way you did this, this project and also mitigating the measures, uh, respecting nature, the waterway and the trees. And speaking of trees, not only did you not remove any protected trees, you adding, um, I think it's six more trees. And I looked at the location of those trees and I think many or most of them are gonna be visible from the street. Uh, it should be very attractive uh, once it all gets done. If there are no other comments, I'll entertain an, a motion on this issue. Um, reminding my colleagues that we will add a phrase in here regarding um, to update the condition of approval uh, to match the plan. Okay. Uh, Rhea, where do you think we ought to insert that? Well, let's see. Uh, so I, you could insert it at the very end of the motion. Um, 
with the conditions, uh, you know, as amended per discussion or something along those lines. And we'll, we'll know that means to, to correct them to match. Okay, I could read it. I would, I move that the planning commission approve the code compliance certificate for a new residence, approve the waiver for overall height of the residence, the variance to exceed the natural state requirement and the stream setback determination to allow the guest parking within the stream setback as outlined in the waiver variance stream setback determination and code compliance certificate at 521 winding way APN 04902010 based on the findings and for the reasons incorporated in the staff report and as conditioned in the waiver variance stream setback determination and code compliance certificate and with the condition that the correction be made to match the uh, condition of approval to the um, plans. Yeah, and you can fix the wording on my addition at the end there, but. I will second that. Any discussion on the motion before we ask Andrea to call the roll? All right, Andrea, roll call, please. Commissioner Iacoponi? Yes. Commissioner Bradley? Yes. Vice Chair Roof? Yes. And Chair Garvey? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you, everyone. I want to thank everyone from the public who uh, called in. We appreciate that. And I want to thank Mr. Grove and his team. Uh, you've been before us, I believe, four times. Um, uh, best of luck in getting this last phase done. And uh, good, good project. It, it, that house is very attractive. Thank you very much. All right. Moving on now to reports, correspondence, and general information. A report on recent city council actions. Andrea, do you have anything for us this evening? Sure, so just a few items um, of note. At its last meeting, the city council uh, decided to uh, continue to allow the on-street uh, dining program. Uh, at least uh, until September, as was originally decided. Um, the other item of note was an appeal that went to city council for 977 Laurel. Uh, and this was the condo conversion that was denied by the planning commission. Uh, it was appealed up to the city council and the city council voted 2-2. Two, two, so 2-2 two, two uphold the planning commission decision and 2-2 two, two approve the applicant's request. Uh, the city's municipal code does explicitly state that during an appeal hearing, if there is a tie, then that has the effect of upholding the planning commission decision uh, and rejecting the appeal. So uh, that item was uh, rejected and the planning commission's original decision to deny the conversion stands. So those are the, the, um, the two big items um, at the last hearing. All right, thank you very much. Uh, moving on to Planning Commission comments or reports. Any commissioners have any comments or reports? I would just like okay. to uh, send a, give a note of thank you to Lisa Porras for her forward view of the calendar. Um, it's uh, really helpful to be able to look out, uh, even if maybe a date or two will change, good to know what's coming. So uh, great and thank you. I'm looking forward to Earth Day next week. I think yes. it's next week. <laughs> All right. And I had one item to add on March 24th, I attended the East Side Innovation Workshop. This was very well attended and very well run. We talked about various development types for the East Side, various uh, traffic and circulation options. It was well facilitated and a lot of great comments. So I think city staff got a lot of information and um, we'll be hearing more in the coming months on the next phase of that of that important project uh, moving on now to correspondence andrea any correspondence i uh, know there is no correspondence this evening any planning staff comments reports and update of current projects yes i do have a few updates 
Um, at your next hearing, we actually are only gonna have uh, one item again. Uh, and this item will be an application for general plan conformity uh, for a site that's located at F Street and El Camino Real. This is uh, a site that is on the border of Belmont and San Carlos. Uh, and anytime a government entity wants to buy or sell a property, it needs to go through a general plan conformity um, analysis. Uh, and then in this particular case, uh, San Mateo County is interested in purchasing this property. So at your next hearing, you will have a staff report um, outlining all of the information for this. Uh, and it's important to note that it's the uh, hearing itself is just for general plan conformity, not for a specific project itself. Um, and I think this commission saw one of these maybe like three or four years ago. So they're not, they're not very common. Uh, as Chair Garvey, as you mentioned, uh, there was a meeting for the Eastside Innovation District. Uh, I wanted to let everyone know that the summary report and appendix are now on the website at sancarlosinnovation.org. Uh, I also wanted to mention the Let's Talk Housing website, which I believe Lisa Porras mentioned at the last meeting. Um, but again, just to remind everyone about this new website for the county and all of the 21 cities uh, within the county's uh, housing element update. And then finally, and I apologize that it's not on the slide, um, we planning staff are looking at the heritage tree ordinance uh, and looking at uh, comparing it to other cities and seeing uh, how and if it should be updated um, in regards to legal tree removals, um, possible tree definitions, um, as well as reasons for removal. So we are gonna be looking at that probably within the next six months or so. Um, and as that moves along, that would come to the Planning Commission for study session uh, as well. So that's something else that uh, is relatively new on our, on our list of items. And I think that is it. All right, Andrea, thank you very much. And with that, we've come to uh, adjournment. So this um, meeting, this evening is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good evening. Good job, Keep wearing.